Hi everybody and welcome back to Enjoy English with Mrs. A. I'm Mrs. A and today we're going to have a look at kitchen and cooking vocabulary. That's right. What you have to know about me is that I've been a teacher for 12 years. I'm an official examiner and I teach English in Spain. Let's not waste any more time and see exactly what we can do in the kitchen. First of all, let's see the difference between chef and cook. Now, anyone can cook. If you're doing it for your family at home, you enjoy it, you are a cook, you cook. If you're doing it professionally and you work, for example, at a restaurant or school, then you are a chef. You are earning money and making a living from cooking. So, when you take cooking to a professional level, you become a chef. Now, before we become chefs, let's focus on what we can do in the kitchen and let's see what we can do on the counter. The counter or the countertop is the space above your furniture where you prepare the food. Pay attention because it always goes with a preposition on, on the counter. So, I prepare the meat on the counter, on top of the counter. The typical actions we perform in the kitchen and in the kitchen goes within because the kitchen is a room of the house and it goes with preposition in. In the kitchen, but on the counter, we chop vegetables. Yes, to chop vegetables is to cut them in small pieces for the soup, for example. We can crush the ice and add it to our drink. We can whisk the eggs in a bowl. You normally whisk the egg whites when you prepare a cake. Pay attention because there is a difference between whisking the eggs and scrambling the eggs. When you whisk the eggs, you only use the egg whites and this is what you normally do when you prepare a cake. When you scramble the eggs, you use the full egg. Another thing that you can do on the counter is squeeze a lemon or squeeze oranges for your orange juice. You can season the meat. To season is to add salt, pepper or spices to the soup, the meat, whatever you are seasoning. This is what we do when we season the soup, the meat, whatever we're cooking. Next on our list, on the counter, we can also dress the salad. Oh my God, dress the salad, right? To dress the salad means adding whatever you think makes that salad more appetizing. And if you would like a side of fries with your salad, first you have to peel the potatoes. When you peel the potatoes, normally you do it with a peeler, okay? And you take the potato and peel it over the trash. Another typical counter activity is slicing the bread or slicing the ham. You take a knife, you take your bread and you start slicing. You see this action is slicing. You cut pieces, yeah, of your ham, of your bread. And if you like mixing in some ham in the salad, you add everything to the mix and you start blending the ingredients together. Now, you can mix several ingredients together when cooking, especially when making a salad. Mixing is adding multiple ingredients to your salad, for example, and doing this, <laughs> making sure it all goes nicely together. And moving on, we prepare our food on the counter, you've seen this, but when it's time for cooking, we can cook on the stove. The stove is the top part, yeah, where you normally prepare your soup or your fries. Sometimes you can have a gas stove, sometimes you can have an electric stove, but this is where the action happens. So on the stove, you can boil the soup, you can fry the fish, so when you fry things, you normally fry with some oil or a little bit of oil, but when you deep fry something, you make sure that thing sinks in the oil like the Titanic. So fry and deep fry, different things. You fry with a little bit of oil, you deep fry when the whole thing 
is submerged in oil. You can also prepare a stew on the stove. A stew is a typical food we prepare in winter and it has and it's like a thick soup. It has potatoes and meat and a lot of things there, but it's thicker than a soup. It's not as liquid as soup. If we want to prepare a steak, we grease the pan first. The pan is normally where we prepare pancakes or anything that we want to fry in a pan. And the first thing we normally do is grease the pan adding some butter or some olive oil or some sunflower oil before adding, let's say, the meat. We also use the pan to melt sugar when we are preparing maybe something sweet, like an upside down apple cake. We steam the vegetables on the stove, maybe pour some wine over them, maybe grate some cheese over the vegetable as well. So when you grate cheese, there's this little kitchen thingy that we all have. We take the cheese, we take, or the Parmesan, and we grate. We start grating the cheese over the whole thing. Or maybe this weekend you feel like having a stir fry. A stir fry is a mix of words. Stir, which is doing this in your stew, in your soup, in whatever you're stirring. And fry, obviously, fry. So a stir fry is normally done in a pan and you can stir fry noodles, vegetables. The thing is, the stir fry is usually prepared in a specific pan that is like a wok pan, right? And you start stirring and frying, but for a very short time. Moving on, let's see what you can do in the oven or the microwave oven. And don't forget about the preposition you saw before, on the counter, on the stove, in the oven, because it goes inside. There are so many things that we can prepare in the oven. And for most things, we have to preheat the oven first. Preheating the oven means preparing the oven, making sure it's hot inside before sticking in the cake or whatever you're baking. Baking is my number one hobby and I love it. You can bake a cake, you can bake pastry, you can bake potatoes, muffins, whatever you want. You can roast meat or chicken in the oven. In fact, this is a very, very popular thing to have. I think in the UK, roast chicken and baked potatoes every Sunday, if I'm not mistaken. We can also use the oven to grill some vegetables or meat. We use the oven to heat things or to defrost things. We defrost anything that we need to be room temperature very quickly. So that's when we stick it in the microwave, we turn the defrost function on, and we wait for the microwave to do the work and defrost that chicken or defrost that something very quickly. In order to cook, we need utensils and we need the proper dishes and tools to cook. Now, some utensils that everyone uses in the kitchen are the chopping board. And the chopping board is usually made of wood and it's where you chop your vegetables, okay? You use that to chop anything. We use the rolling pin to prepare, let's say the cookie dough, and straighten and level the dough before we make our cookies. So the tool, the wooden tool, is called a rolling pin. We use a spatula to stir in our food. And most of the time we use a wooden spatula in order to protect our pots or our pans. We use the steak hammer to prepare the meat for schnitzel, for example. The steak hammer will make your meat tender and flat. If you don't know what a schnitzel is, you're missing out. Make sure you check it out. The typical things we need to cook are a pot, which is usually where we prepare the soup or the stew, a frying pan, a pressure pot if you need something to boil really quickly. 
If you're a big fan of pasta, you also need a strainer, all right? That is where you pour the pasta and make sure you separate the pasta from the water. You use a strainer to strain all that water out and prepare your pasta. You use the grater, which is what we use, right? To grate cheese over things. We need a corkscrew for our bottles of wine. Necessary. And of course, apart from the dishes, the tools or the utensils we need in the kitchen, we also count on our appliances. Appliances, wonderful things that keep our food fresh or prepare some of our favorite things quicker. The microwave oven is an appliance that we all have, we all need. The fridge is an appliance that keeps our food fresh. And then we have the coffee maker, the sandwich maker, the toaster, the mixer, and without the mixer, we wouldn't be able to prepare cakes, the blender to make smoothies, okay? So with the mixer, we make cakes. With a blender, we prepare smoothies. The blender is usually a machine this high, and maybe you add bananas and strawberries, a little bit of milk, turn it on, it mixes everything together, it liquefies everything, and then you have yourself a great smoothie. And of course, we need to serve our food in dishes. You probably already know the word plate. Very general, a plate is something flat. But if you're eating soup, you're gonna eat your soup in a bowl or in a soup plate. We also have dessert plates, bowls, cups, jugs, several small dishes like a butter dish where you keep the butter, a lot of glasses and mugs, cocktail glasses, cups, wine glasses, water glasses, all these things are called dishes. And they are normally made of ceramic, glass, crystal, bamboo, depending on your preference. And of course, I also want us to have a look at the types of things we can cook. When you think about your daily menus and you want to go shopping, you might want to consider buying some red meat. Red meat is beef, venison, for example. Venison is anything that lives in the forest, wild animals, deer, wild boar. And then you might want to buy some fish, cod, herring, salmon, whatever you want. But maybe you don't like meat very much or you don't like red meat very much. In that case, you're going to buy poultry. Poultry is that section that refers to birds. Chicken, duck, turkey, quail. But if you're a vegetarian, then you're not gonna look for the meat in the slightest because meat is not for you. Instead, vegetarians enjoy eating a lot of dairy products. Dairy products are products made from milk. Cheese, yogurt, anything that is made with milk goes under dairy. And of course, if you are a vegan, you're not gonna eat any dairy, but you are going to eat fruit and vegetables. There are so many dietary choices out there. We'll speak about all of them in a new video, but for now, the last thing I want us to look at today is something fundamental in my cuisine, the sauce. There are many types of sauces in the world, mustard, ketchup, all that. Sauce is a very inclusive word. You can refer to anything and everything as sauce, but there are specifics. So when you say sauce, it's very general, like ketchup, mustard, barbecue sauce, hot sauce, cranberry sauce, sweet chili sauce, for example. But when you say dressing, dressing is the sauce that is typical only for salad. So if you would add sauce on fries, in a salad, you would add a dressing because the dressing is the sauce that goes with the salad. So you can have olive oil and vinegar, Caesar dressing, yogurt dressing, blue cheese dressing, any dressing you like for the salad. And then of course, we have gravy. 
Poutine is a national dish in Canada. It's fries and ketchup and gravy. The gravy is a special sauce that goes with meat and is usually a sauce made from meat. I would like to wish you all bon appetit, whatever you're eating. Enjoy your food. Now you know more vocabulary. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you like the content and you want to support me teaching my students. That would mean a lot, lot to me. Thank you so much for being here with me today. And remember, today's video was sponsored by EnjoyEnglish.es, the academy that brings the teacher to you if you live in Pamplona, Saragossa, or Valencia. For online classes, in the rest of the world, contact them. Thank you. Bye.